Psalms 84. We'll just read the last few verses. The Bible says in verse number 10, For a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the man that trusteth in thee. Brother Adrian, why don't you pray for us tonight, brother? Yes. God help us. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Brother Adrian. I want you to notice some things from this text. Notice, first of all, the psalmist's longing. Look again in verse number 10. He says, For a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. you got to look up in verse number 2. We find that he says, My soul longeth, yea, even fainteth for the courts of the Lord. Uh, my heart and my flesh crieth out for the living God. Uh, the psalmist uh, uh, is longing for those days when once again he can be in the house of God uh, and worship God with God's people. Uh, what a blessing that we have this place we can come tonight and we can worship the Lord uh, and we can exalt the Lord. Uh, and I trust that all the days of our lives we'll have this privilege uh, and this freedom. Uh, but we don't know what a day brings forth. Uh, we don't know. There may come a day uh, when sickness may befall us and we can't come to the house of God. Uh, there may be a day uh, uh, when we're separated by some other uh, 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 means, unforeseen means, where we cannot get to the house of God. Uh, and God forbid there may come a day uh, when they don't allow us to openly assemble like we do tonight. Uh, and we may have to meet uh, in garages, in basements, in caves, in dens, uh, like the early church had to meet uh, when persecution came against them. Uh, but I'm telling you tonight, uh, we have this privilege. Uh, we ought to take full advantage of it because uh, there may come a day uh, when what we're experiencing tonight just might be a memory. Amen. We see the longing of the psalmist. Uh, notice the lowliness of the psalmist. Uh, verse number 10, he said, I'd rather be a doorkeeper uh, in the house of my God than to dwell uh, in the tents of wickedness. Uh, Israel had been carried away in captivity. Uh, they're living in a foreign land, a strange land uh, that worships false gods, uh, a wicked land. Uh, he said, one day in the house of God uh, is better than dwelling with that crowd. Uh, and he said, I'd rather be a doorkeeper uh, at the house of God. Uh, that was the lowest position uh, you could have uh, at the tabernacle or at the temple. Uh, uh, to be a doorkeeper. Uh, uh, he said, I'd rather be that. Uh, what he's saying is, I'd rather be the threshold uh, that people step over to go in and worship uh, uh, than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Uh, he said, I don't have to be the high priest. Uh, I don't have to be one of the singers. Uh, I don't have to be somebody seen. Uh, just let me get to the house of God. Uh, we see his lowliness, his humility. Uh, then I want you to notice uh, he switches in a stop pattern. And I want you to notice the light. Look what he said in verse number 11. He says, For the Lord God is a sun. He's referring to the light that God brings in darkness. And what a blessing that our Lord Jesus is that light. He came into this world and the darkness comprehended it not. Aren't you glad light dispels darkness? Uh, and I'm glad wherever the sun shines on the earth, uh, there is light. Uh, and what a blessing when the S-O-N shined on the earth. Uh, uh, the truth of the light of the glorious gospel came uh, that you and I might have hope tonight. Uh, we see the light. Uh, but then he also 
shows us life. He says in verse 11, For the Lord God is a, sh- a sun and a shield. Now we think of a shield as a defensive mechanism. Matter of fact, in the military terms uh, of the Bible, they had two types of shields. They had a body shield that was as tall as them that they could uh, uh, stand behind to withstand uh, all the arrows and all the darts of the enemy. And then they had a personal shield that they'd put on their arm uh, when they was in hand-to-hand combat uh, that they could use the personal shield for defense. Uh, But a lot of times uh, 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 when they were banded together as soldiers, uh, they'd take those body shields uh, and they would form them above them uh, and form a a protective barrier uh, so that when arrows were shot up in the sky and came down, uh, uh, it would not penetrate their shields uh, and they would be spared, and they would have life. Uh, And can I say, my dear friends, uh, uh, without the Lord we have no life. Uh, He is our shield. Uh, He is our defense. Uh, He is our mediator, our high priest. Uh, What a blessing to have an advocate in the Lord. Uh, And through Him we have life, uh, and we have life more abundantly. Uh, But then notice the levy that he mentions in verse number 11. He says, for the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. Notice what he levies to you and I, who are recipients of his light and his life. He gives grace and glory. What a blessing to have the grace and glory of the Lord. Can I say grace is a present favor? We are recipients of His grace, His saving grace, but also His sustaining grace, uh, His supplying grace. Uh, What a blessing that we have grace for every need. Uh, What a blessing to have the favor of God, uh, the unmerited favor of God, uh, through the Lord Jesus Christ, His grace. Uh, But can I say glory is a promised future. Uh, What a day. Uh, when we get a glorified body uh, and we'll dwell in His presence, in His glory, uh, and we'll be uh, in the glory of the abode of God. Uh, uh, Grace now, glory in the future. Uh, What a blessing, all because uh, of the light and life of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, But then there is a limitation or restrictions. Look again at verse number 11. He says, the Lord will give grace and glory. And then there's a colon. The, the thought's going to change right here. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the man that trusteth in thee. Can I say that no good thing will he withhold from us? And it doesn't stop there from them that walk uprightly and them that trusteth in him. Can I say the restrictions are being right with God and having faith in God. When we are right with the Lord, he'll not withhold any good thing from us. When we are trusting in the Lord, he'll not withhold any good thing from us. Uh, We'll have his grace and glory in our life. But if we're not walking with him, my dear friend, we'll not have the blessings of God that are afforded us in Christ. I'm interested in verse number 11 this evening. He said, for the Lord God is a sun and a shield. I'm interested where it says, for the Lord God is a sun. This is the only place in Scripture where the Lord is referred to as the sun. Matter of fact, most of the time he shuns from that statement because in the pagan world, every pagan religion worships the sun, S-U-N. You go in any Catholic church, you look around, you'll find a sun. You go anywhere in paganism, you'll find suns. But here we find that the psalmist said the Lord is a sun. For the Lord God is a sun. And I want to preach on this thought. The sun, S-O-N, 
our son, S-U-N. The son, our son. The son, S-O-N. Our son, S-U-N. The Lord God uh, is a son. Our son, uh, the Lord God, uh, the S-O-N, our son. Mm, let me give you a few points. We'll go to the house. Can I say tonight that the S-U-N, the son, is essential for our existence, Amen. our life. We could not live on planet earth without the sun, the S-U-N. Can I say that the sun generates photosynthesis? My daughter brought up that term today on her way up from church, and I didn't say a word. Did you notice I didn't say a word? Because I thought I might be preaching this. Uh, uh, can I say that the S-U-N generates photosynthesis, which is the process that the plants use to make nutrients. Uh, and without plants, all living things would die. Everything uh, needs plant life. Uh, do you realize plants give off oxygen? Amen. Do you realize that uh, uh, plants, vegetation, uh, and every form is somehow uh, connected to nature? Uh, 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 bees use uh, flowers to pollinate. Uh, and we know that uh, 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 animals eat plants. Uh, we know that we eat plants. We eat green beans. Uh, uh, we eat watermelons. Uh, uh, we, we eat cucumbers and all kinds of plants. Uh, without the plant life, uh, all living creatures would die. Uh, and without the sun, we couldn't have plant life. Uh, photosynthesis uh, uh, is the process that plants use to make nutrients. Uh, the sun provides the va vast majority of the energy that we need. Uh, do you know that, uh, that wind and Energy comes from the sun, uh, and it comes from uh, 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 heating up the atmosphere uh, and causing air to circulate. Uh, uh, we know uh, uh, that the, uh, uh, our weathering patterns in the jet stream comes from the west to the east, uh, and we know that uh, uh, the way the jet stream comes brings our uh, our uh, 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 weather. Uh, uh, what a blessing! We had a little shower earlier. Uh, those of you that got caught up in the rain, I'm sorry, but we needed the rain. Uh, but with Without the sun heating up the atmosphere uh, and bringing the jet stream uh, and bringing the moisture, uh, much of it from down around Mexico up to our area, we wouldn't have the water we need. Uh, our weather and our energy throughout the world uh, most of the time is generated by the sun. Uh, without the sun, uh, we couldn't exist. We would not have life. Uh, you know why there's no life on Pluto? It takes forever for the sunlight to get there. Mm. Uh, but wet yet, God in His infinite wisdom put the earth right where it needed to be. We're not too close to the sun. We're not too far from the sun. Because He knew we needed the sun in order to survive. You ever wonder why God put the sun right where He did and all the plants right where they are and all the stars right where? Because He's God. And He knows uh, all things. And He does uh, all things well. Uh, uh, we know uh, without the sun, we could have no existence, no life. Uh, but without the S-O-N, uh, uh, we'd have no everlasting life. Uh, uh, the Bible says in John 8, 12, uh, then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. Uh, he that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, uh, but shall have the light of life. Uh, John 5, 24, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word uh, and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life uh, and shall not come into condemnation uh, but is passed from death unto life. Uh, aren't you glad we once were lost but now we uh, uh, were found. Uh, we once were blind but now we see. Uh, we once were dead in trespasses and sins uh, but through the Spirit of God we've been quickened uh, and made alive. What a blessing. Uh, John eleven twenty five. 25. Uh, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. Uh, he that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Uh, and of course, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, uh, he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believed him uh, should not perish, but have everlasting life. Uh, for God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, uh, but that the world through him might be saved. Uh, hey, through the Son we have our existence. Through the S-O-N, we have everlasting life. And by the way, the S-O-N is the one that controls the S-U-N. Uh, and we'd have no existence or no life without God because He created us in the womb. Right. Amen. Uh, not only is the Son essential for our existence,
but it's essential for our edibles, our food. Again, the ultimate source of all food is plants, and plants cannot survive without sunlight. And the word photosynthesis that I used a minute ago means to make food from sunlight. That's what it means. And can I say all spiritual food comes from the S-O-N. The Bible said in John chapter 6, verse 32, Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he that which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Uh, then they said unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. Uh, and Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. Uh, he that cometh to me shall never hunger, uh, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst uh, not only do we have everlasting life through the Lord but he is our spiritual nourishment aren't you glad that he gave us the bread of life he's the living word but he gave us the written word that we can have a steady spiritual diet and we can grow in grace and nourishment and knowledge of the Lord uh, what a blessing that we can Dine from the Lord's table anytime we want. Aren't you glad man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word which proceedeth out of the mouth of God? Uh, oh, the S-O-N. He gives us our spiritual food. What a sad commentary. There are folks that come to church and go away hungry. Mm. I love it old song, Come and Dine, the Master calleth, Come and Dine. Can I say the Lord always spreads a table before us, but some of us are spoiled rotten. When I grew up, you ate what mama fixed, or you starved. Uh, Hat Lynn, remember we used to eat sometimes tomato and mayonnaise sandwiches. Huh? I remember them cranking out Span and slapping mayonnaise on it. That's what you ate. Huh? Fried bologna. Hallelujah. These kids today, if you don't give them chicken nuggets, they don't eat. Y'all spoiled. I ain't talking to you. You eat what your mama puts on your plate. Trevor, when was the last time you had some spinach? You're spoiled, boy. Need some spinach and some kale. That'll make you grow, son. Huh? Huh? Brother Daniel, king of the chicken nuggets whose sister works at Chick fil A. When was the last time you had some raw liver? Never had liver. You don't know how to. You get up there and repent, boy. I'll never forget, my mother-in-law was in the hospital. I've heard this story a hundred times. So my father-in-law had to fix dinner. Well, you'd have to know my father-in-law. Hi, baby. Uh, my father-in-law, tough as nails, military hero, police officer. So he come home and fixed what he wanted. He fixed them liver and made my darling wife, that is a little girl, eat liver and spinach. Same meal. Liver and spinach. Uh, uh, no wonder she wanted to marry me, because I like chocolate. Uh, well, you tell me you like liver? Liver and onions, buddy. You need to repent, too. Yeah, you got to put gravy on it to kill it. Uh, but I'm telling you, you kids don't eat liver, do you? You don't eat spam. You don't eat bologna. Uh, you don't eat anything got to be pizza, chicken nuggets. Uh, my day, we ate what was put on, on the plate for us when we went hungry. Uh, Mama didn't run back off into the kitchen and fix something that we liked. You ate what we... Matter of fact, Brother, Brother Ed, a lot of times we ate what we had. We didn't have any choices. Uh, these kids are spoiled. Well, I'm saying it's happening in our church houses. Uh... We have our favorite preachers. We have our favorite topics. We come in. If the preacher isn't preaching something we like, we just check out. Uh, 
Can I tell you, uh, uh, the Lord knows exactly what we need. Uh, uh, friend, we may not need it tonight, but we may need it next week. Uh, you better come and dine. Uh, it has all the nutrition we need to help us in this old wicked world. Uh, uh, listen, uh, hey, whatever the Lord serves, it's exactly what we need. Uh, we ought to come, uh, dine on it, be thankful for it, uh, and allow God to do a work in our hearts. Uh, Mm. Can I say without the S-U-N, we wouldn't have an existence. It's essential for our existence. It's essential for our edibles, but it's also essential for our energy, our health. Do you know how many health benefits come from the sun? I found out a whole lot more when I was searching all this out. Do you know that sunlight produces vitamin D? I knew that. Uh, matter of fact, when a baby's got jaundice, they'll take you, take them, tell them, take you, take them out in the sun. They need some vitamin D. Uh, uh, it generates v uh, vitamin D in the body, but its benefits include these things. It supports healthy bones. The sunlight uh, uh, also manages calcium levels in our body. It also will reduce inflammation in our body. Some of you look like ghosts. Get out there in the sun. It'll help you, huh? It also supports the immune system and glucose metabolism. The sun's exposure, according to research, may also protect against type 1 diabetes. It also may protect against multiple sclerosis. Brother Thad, get out and get a tan. It might help you, son. Huh? It also uh, 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 protects against colon cancer and some breast cancers, uh, also some prostate cancers uh, and non-Hodgkin lymphoma. Uh, the sunlight supports better sleep. I need to get out in the sun more because I don't sleep much. Uh, it does that by regulating serotonin and melatonin levels. Did you know all that? I didn't know that. Can I say this sunlight is also beneficial in improving well-being and our moods. Yeah. Fellas, when your wife's moody, get her out in the sun. <laughs> It'll help her mood. Huh? Seriously. Do you know there are parts of Alaska where uh, they'll have 20 hours a day of darkness and they say uh, a lot of people, it affects their moods. Uh, and you get to, where'd Brother Charlie at? You was probably a really, really, really in bad moods when you were in that submarine uh, submerged underwater all them times. Uh, it's not meant for us to be fish. Uh, <laughs> we need the sunlight. It improves our moods. Uh, can I say this? Not only that, uh, it also uh, 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 is beneficial in boosting the immune system, relieving pain. Uh, it'll bring relaxation. Uh, it'll help wounds heal. Uh, it'll help you feel more alert. Uh, it'll increase your job satisfaction. You know what they found? You put people in a basement with no lights. Uh, they grumble, complain, in a bad mood. Uh, you move them up where there's a window and they're more productive. Uh, can I say this? It also reduces is depression. You stay in darkness, you're a candidate to be depressed. A lack of sunlight puts people at higher risk for depression, seasonal affective disorder. That's what happens in those places where it's dark most of the time. They get something they call sad. Seasonal affective disorder. Mm -hmm. It also, uh, uh, a lack of sunlight to get you, uh, puts you at higher risk for ADHD. That'll help some of you. For anxiety mm, and other mental disorders. The sun's beneficial for our energy, our health. Mm. That's why uh, if we go through wintertime and it's dark and it's snowy and it's cloudy for a long period of time, we get to feel the, the blues. That's why we all like springtime. The sun starts coming out. Flowers start growing. Our moods pick up. huh? Can I say the S-O-N is the healer of our soul? Amen. Amen. The Bible says in Psalms 42, 11, Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God, uh, for I shall yet praise him who is the health of my countenance 
and my God. Uh, Proverbs 3, we know verse 5, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, lean not unto thy understanding. Verse 6, uh, In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Well, we stop right there. Listen to verse 7. Be not wise in thine own eyes, fear the Lord, and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy name, O uh, and marrow to thy bones. Uh, exp- you know, just uh, uh, the S-O-N is essential for our spiritual health. I can always tell when people haven't been around him. It affects their moods. It affects their countenance. It affects their outlook, their hope. Miss Rosie talked about peace that the Lord has given her. You stay away from the Lord, you won't have his peace. And then I thought about this lastly. The S-U-N is essential for our enkindling or for warmth. We need the sunlight to warm up this frozen tundra of a planet we live on. And can I say this? Without the sun, that's all the earth would be. It would be Pluto. Just Neptune, a frozen tundra that would have no life. Why do they keep sending all these probes out to find life other places when really the life they need is through Jesus Christ? Why don't they probe into the Word of God? They'd find what they're looking for. But can I say without the sun, S-O-N, people become cold and indifferent toward each other. Can I say without the S-O-N, yeah, you have all kinds of racial problems. But in the beauty, through the S-O-N, there is no racial problems in the church. Isn't that a blessing? We find God's no respecter of persons. We, we find that God doesn't see color. The only color he's interested in is the red blood of the Lord Jesus Christ washing away our sin. Isn't it a wonderful thing that through the S-O-N, we just are brethren in Christ. What a blessing, huh? Doesn't matter where anybody comes from. By the way, say, well, I'm an American. You know what that means? You're a mutt. Unless you're a Native American. All of us come from somewhere other than here. Huh? But what a blessing that through the blood of Jesus Christ, we're all one. And what a privilege. Uh, Can I say that without the Lord, you have coldness, discontentment. You have folks that uh, are just mean to one another. But through the Lord Jesus Christ, listen to what he says our attitude is. Ephesians 4.32 and be a kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Through the S-O-N, it's a whole lot different than without Him. We're not a frozen tundra of a people. We're a kind people. We're tender-hearted to people. We're accepting of people. We love people. What a blessing. Unless you're a Pharisee. Huh? You know what happens to Pharisees? I've seen it in the Bible. They needed to get born again. That's what needed. huh? They needed the S-O-N. Huh? And then I'll say this and I'll be done. You must limit your exposure to the S-U-N. If you're like me, you go out, you don't tan like Lexi. Stand up, Lexi. I asked her last week, I said, you been in a tanning bed? You been getting a spray tan? She said, No. She works as a lifeguard. She's out in the sun all the time. So she's dark, dark dark-complected. If that was me, I'd look like Miss Annette's jacket. (laughs) I don't tan, I burn. Then I peel, and then I burn some more. That's my my makeup. You got to limit your exposure to the S-U-N. You can get melanoma, skin cancer. Huh? When you talk to Brother Ray, that's why he wears that big goofy-looking hat when he's out there mowing. He's had skin cancers cut off his ears, huh? Um, because when we were young and stupid, we didn't think about those stuff. We just went out. You got to put on sunscreen and sunblock to keep all that stuff, them uh, uh, UV rays that are harmful to us, to keep those blocked from us. You got to limit your exposure to the SUN. Even though it has a lot of good qualities, it also has things that are harmful. But can I say this? You can never get too much exposure to the S-O-N. 
Uh, matter of fact, the more exposed you get from him, the more he shines on you, the more you start looking like him. The more you start talking like him. Uh, the more you start walking like him. Uh, the more others take note that you've been with him. Uh, what a blessing. Uh, we can see Miss uh, uh, Lexi's been out in the SUN. Uh, what a blessing if the world would take note that we've been with the SON. Uh, hey, uh, we ought to just seek to get more exposed to him all the time. Uh, the Lord is a son and our shield. God help us to long for him, to live for him, to lean on him, and to love like him, and to share him with a lost and dying world. Let me ask you this. When was the last time he was your S-O-N and your S-U-N? When was the last time you realized your total dependency relies on him? God help us to depend on Him for the light that we need and the glorious light from the Scriptures and the life we need being our shield. Amen. You know, without the Lord protecting us, without His protective hedge, oh, we'd be in a mess. But we ought to bless His holy name. I'm glad the S-O-N is our S-U-N. Without Him, oh, we could not survive. Maybe tonight you need to come and thank Him. Maybe tonight you need to come tell Him you love Him. Maybe tonight you just need to get a little closer to Him. Get a little bit of more Him on you. Maybe tonight you get, need to come to know Him. Maybe tonight you just need to praise Him one more time for how good He's been. I don't know what He's done in your life or your heart, but maybe tonight you just need to come feast from Him. I don't know, but I do know this. Without him, we'd be nothing. Let's all stand tonight. Brother Clint, come get a song of invocation. God spoke to you, the altar's open. All I know is he cares for you, and he tells us to cast all our cares on him, for he careth for you. Folks are coming, they're getting a song. Let's pray. Father, we do bless you. Thank you for being our son and our shield. Thank you for being everything we need. Thank you, Lord, for your kindness toward us. Now, Father, bless in this invitation. Speak to hearts. Help folks do business with God. Lord, maybe somebody needs to go to somebody tonight. Just tell them, you know what? The Lord, the Son, has used you to impact my life. Thank you for being a blessing. Maybe somebody needs to go to somebody and just tell them they love them. Maybe somebody needs to be real sensitive. There might be somebody really hurting here tonight. And Lord, you want to send somebody by their way just to show them some compassion. Lord, whatever's needed in this invitation, we pray you'd speak to hearts, and certainly if there be any my, anybody in our midst who's unsaved, I pray tonight would be the night of their salvation. God bless in this invitation. Speak to hearts. We'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcforums.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.